Marguerite Tonery from Tribes Press, and today I am having a conversation with Annette Rumberg. Now, Annette um, is works here at Tribes Press. Uh, in our, she's one of our professional editors, but she's also from Estonia, and she translates from English to Estonian and from Estonian to English. So today, um, welcome, Annette, firstly. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Lovely to be here. Great. And um, we're going to just have a conversation. We want to talk about... Yeah and the challenge of translation. And one of the things we really want to talk about is, I suppose you had the book COVID Monsters Visit. And this book was um, created in lockdown as a, it was a collaborative collaborative effort between European uh, illustrators and um, translators. And it was created in order to support children and young families through the pandemic. So just to tell the listener what the book is about, COVID Monsters Visit is about a little um, monster uh, who wandered away from home, but he's cute and cuddly, a big fat belly, big purple belly and big purple monster. And um, he, I'll give a sample of it just so people will get a feel for it. It's a picture book. So mm-hmm. it's, so the first page of the picture book says, I heard a story the other day of a monster and COVID COVID's his name. He's big and purple and has a fat belly that wobbles when he walks and that's not telling. He has squishy hands and squishy toes and where he walks, no one goes. You, will, you, will you translate that? Will you read that first caption, the first uh, piece in Estonian, just so people can have... I will, yeah. Ma kuusin lugu lillas monstrumist, kel COVID pandud nimeks. Kõht kõndides tal koriseb ja väriseb, seda ei saab anna imeks. Tal on pehmed käed ja pehmed varbad, so there are two things we want to talk about. So this is a really cute monster. It's helped children through the pandemic because anxiety levels are a little bit high. They can't go play, go out and play with their friends. They There's no children in playgrounds now. They can't go to visit their granny and granddad and get a big hug and get treats. And um, that's all gone. They have to keep socially distanced. So the book teaches children about washing their hands, about being socially distanced, about lots of different things in a child friendly way. Now, it was a rhyming uh, story. It is a rhyming story, at least in English. And you, when you read it there, it sounded like it was rhyming in Estonian. How tricky is it to translate, but not just to translate, but to translate a rhyme? It's very tricky. I actually was thinking while I was translating it, um, English is really hard language to translate from. But Estonian is so hard language to translate to. Yeah. So there was a lot of words. I couldn't actually find the right translation in Estonian. So I had to get something similar, slightly similar. But it might, like, if you have both uh, books in your hand, like English and Estonian, it might, like, uh, like the word daft. We don't have that, uh, like, uh, actual translation for it in Estonian. So it's very similar to every language. It's like the Irish language, the English language, to, to German, mm. to Italian. There are words in uh, languages that, particularly, I think English. English seems to have a word for everything. Mm. Where other languages may have a description for something. Um, yes. Is it like that with Estonian? That it's not exactly that we have that you have the word, but you have something similar that you just des- that describes the word. It, uh, yes, exactly. And sometimes it can be three three words that describe that one word. Or the other thing that was a real struggle for me was that some of the words mean the different things, but it's the one word you use for different things. So yeah. I had to find um, uh, different words in Estonian even that I couldn't use uh, because you don't want to repeat yourself while you translate. Yeah. And then the re- So, uh, yeah, I did find struggle. uh, It was a struggle to get it rhyming and it was struggle to find words to describe in Estonian. And then some of the lines you can see either they're a bit shorter in Estonian. Uh, There's, I think, one page which is nearly a line and a half shorter in Estonian book than it is in English book because we don't have. Yeah. I'm just thinking that you said three wor- three words to explain one word. We have in the Irish language, we say ectorchabok, which is mm. giving out, to give out, you know? Mm-hmm. And it often gets translated directly into English. The Irish people say, are you giving out? 
And if you're coming to this country and you're and person and you're learning English for the first time, you think, what exactly am I giving out? Um, but it actually means to complain in the English language would be to complain, complain, where we in the Irish language egg torch a mock three words. So I can see how the Estonian language, you may need three words for that one word that the English language would have, or exactly. you may be able to do something simpler than the English yeah. language has. So yeah, it's quite, and tell me while we're on this, because it is quite interesting, cultural differences. Are there cultural differences when like, I understand, I remember um, we have another book that's translated into French, Silly Sammy, but there's no word for silly in um, French. So it's like a clown, but they have a particular mm. phrase for that in French that is, is not like silly isn't, it doesn't exist. They have a phrase yeah. for like a, a way of saying something. And that's a cultural difference because people don't say you're silly to anybody in France. In, that's an insult. Where is, there's a cultural difference there. And I wonder, like, are have you those cultural differences um, when you're translating that you couldn't know, you couldn't possibly say that, but you can, this is how we say it, you know, because it would be an insult, you know. Is there something like that in Estonia? Um, I actually think Estonians are really open with their language. So okay. like the word silly, we would have very, it's it would be a like sweet way of saying silly in Estonian as well. It would be, so oh, okay. say that to a little uh, small child, but it wouldn't even be maybe, it wouldn't translate as correctly to Estonian. It's just the words, that's the way you would use it. Yeah. But uh, I think, yeah, most of the things like the, the word daft was for me the biggest issue. Yeah. Don't be daft. Like I couldn't even figure out how to, how to say that in Estonian. It took me a while to research. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> how to translate that? So let's talk about um, COVID once again. I'll read another. I'll read another page. Daddy played with me and my brother around all the house. We chased one another, and when we were done, we sat down by my tent and looked out at the sun. Tomorrow we we'll go. I'll promise you that. Tomorrow we we'll go, but promise me that you'll wash your hands now. That's that. I'm picking this page for a particular reason because this is a very Irish way of speaking the English language. <laughs> because in in um, Irish we'd say now shin shin, that's that, and it's just yeah. an Irish. It's it's an Irish term. Like you just say it. It's shin shin, that's that, you know. Um, it, <laughs> but it doesn't make sense to say that's that. It's either <laughs> that or it's that or it's this or it's whatever. Um, so it. But it comes through in the English language for us. Culturally, it's there. But if you said that to maybe an English person in the UK in London, and there's some words that we would say and they'd be looking at us, even though it's the same English language, you know, but they'd be looking at what is she saying or what is he saying? So, um, so I think where I'm coming from in this piece is that I think that a person who's, who translates from one language to the other has to be fluent in both languages. They have mm. to know the, the terms in both languages. Um, so like if you were to translate, literally translate that's that, it would sound appalling in Estonian. It wouldn't work at all. So yeah. um, it's that piece where you know this is what that language, the, what is meant in one language. So it must, you must be fluent in that language, have a deep knowledge of that language to be able to translate to another. Um, mm. So to your mother tongue. So tell me a little bit about that. How long are you in Ireland? How, how have you found the English language here? You have a command of the English language, there's no doubt about it. Um, and that's the reason why you are you were a translator because it takes a while to become a translator. You have to be fluent in both languages. So tell us a little bit about that when, you come to, when it comes to translation. Yeah, um, I, uh, I moved. I moved to Ireland nearly six years ago now. So I came and I came for college. I had been in, I had lived in Germany for over three years with Irish American family. And oh. that's how I found myself in Galway. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's great. And uh, she, like I learned a good bit of Irish um, phrases and terminology. For example, the uh, uh, phrase that sound or uh, your sounds. 
because originally I would have thought you're quiet or you were making noise or something. Mm. Where when like um, before I lived here before I knew any Irish, but uh, when I started living with her, she explained to me that's like, no, oh, you're sound like you're cool. But yeah. uh, I moved here six years ago, five years ago, five and a half years ago. I came to college to study English and drama, uh, literature, English literature, and literature in general. I always knew this is something I want to do since I was very young. And uh, I then ended up doing publishing and I had to, I kind of had to change my life towards English. There were times and there have been times I speak more English than I do Estonian. Not at the moment because during the lockdown and the pandemic, you speak with the home maybe more often. Mm. But when I was working, when I was in college, I rarely spoke Estonian. Maybe once every other week, Mm. I was on the phone to speak with someone. Mm. So I got very uh, confident with my English abilities and to speak with it. And especially like Irish slang words and what you guys, the way you uh, in Ireland speak, actually, you know, the phrases and stuff. I know. We're, <laughs> we, we're all out, you know, we don't care what we say. Um, but, um, yeah, that's quite a challenge. You're very courageous to do that. It's not alone that you come to Ireland to learn to kind of learn how to speak the language. You actually came to Ireland and immediately immersed yourself in the language by going to university and studying mm-hmm. English literature. Wow, mm-hmm. that was a big step. That must have been an incredible workload for you. Uh, to y- yes. Uh, yeah, to get a grasp of that language. Well done. That is well done. That's all I can say. <laughs> I remember actually now did you say about our terms, the thing, the slang we use. Um, I was in Canada that the Word on the Street um, Literary Festival um, in 2019, September, I think, 2019. And uh, so as, as with our publisher, Tribes Press, so we were over in Canada and having a wonderful time in Toronto. And I was staying with my aunt and uncle. And I'm so grateful I was because they really <laughs> gave a great time. And um, <clears throat> they we had a kind of a house party all the cousins came over and 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 their neighbors and all of that and <clears throat> I said um so we were having a conversation and I said ah sure it was a bit of crack you know and <laughs> they were asking me how the the uh, the literary, literary festival went and I said oh, it was a bit of crack you know and um good job my uncle Ian was standing beside me because the Canadians were absolutely horrified. The faces just <laughs> immediately changed. And I um, I was wondering, oh, sugar, I probably said something wrong there now. And Ian jumped in and he said, well, she means it's an Irish term. <laughs> she means the no cocaine, no crack here. She means oh. good fun. And they went, oh, okay, 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 okay. And then they looked at me a little bit weirdly for another second. And then they, oh, no, no, it's not. <laughs> but it was quite funny so I can see what you mean about the term as we use um tell me um, so not alone have you translated this book into Estonian but you had it peer reviewed in Estonia so you handed this over to teachers and to professional translators and to professionals in the Estonian literature in this who are studying Estonian literature as well or when I say study studying and teaching it you handed this book over to them. You said, okay, I've translated it from English to Estonian. I've respected the cultural differences between the two countries. Um, mm-hmm. And I, when I say cultural differences, I don't mean to be um, disrespectful in any way when I say that. Um, the nuances, I think, the nuance, we're all the same. We're all human beings. We all have the same emotions and feelings. Mm-hmm. And nuances of different cultures. And you handed it over to these people who were exceptional in their own fields in Estonia. And you asked them to, to review it, to see what they thought of it. How did that go for you? It went actually, it went uh, really well. And I actually, the most help I got was from my um, my um, very close um, friend who's actually a poet and okay. help, and, and she's fluent in English as well. And she helped me go through the, that everything does rhyme because it's children's picture book. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I said to her, if it rhymes, but it doesn't make sense, that doesn't, it's not okay. Mm-hmm. So like there was a lot of work that went into it. 
but like uh, finally what I the feedback I got from teachers and from the poet herself who's actual actual expert of Estonian language I it was a very good feedback there was changes for certain words that maybe would be a bit older Estonian now yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I had used so like for modern children I should have changed some things but I I just There's yeah so tiny little um yeah. tiny little corrections yeah I understand yeah, yeah. yes but uh, <laughs> it was like the overall feedback was great and uh, the w biggest issue or not issue even maybe concern for me was that Estonian uh, grammar would be correct yeah. and punctuation yeah because if I if you don't uh, do it all the time and you're adjusted to English punctuation it's really hard to change yourself around for a while you know like there's some things you can um, you can miss like in English language you have Oxford comma but if in Estonian you put comma in front of and that would be a big no-no all my Estonian teachers would just curse mm. me <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember when we were children you never put a comma in front of and oh we would be absolutely slated mm -hmm. as children for our essays but now you see how commas go in in front of ands I think it's just when the sentence is just that bit too long and two sentences yes. can be made out of the one sentence. Um, but when I was a child in school, you would never put that comma there. But now that has even changed in the English language, you know. So, yeah, the yeah. Little changes are happening all the time that we that creep into our psyche and we start doing it, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's I suppose every language evolves. And that's the that's the thing, isn't it? I, it's, exactly. a tribute, it's a tribute to how well you translated it because it is incredibly difficult to translate a rhyme. And yeah. It's a tribute to how well you translated it that you had people who were exceptional in their own field in literature, in Estonian literature, and that they said to you, well done, this looks really mm. well. And yeah. uh, just a little thing, just let's try a little twist. And you know what, in, in saying that, if the twist was never there, it probably would have been fine anyway, but now it's exceptional. So well done. Exactly. Well done, yeah. And another issue what I always find, and like this is anything you write or like not even only translation, if you read it so many times after you've translated or written it, it starts sounding weird. Yeah. So that's what happened to me. It didn't sound correct anymore. And I just was like, I, I can't, because I don't see any more mistakes. Oh, now. Okay. Somebody else yeah. sees them. I'm a, I'm a writer. I wrote the book, sure. I'm a writer. I wrote <laughs> COVID Monsters Visit. But um, I know that from even our Catheus, my Catheus series, which are really big books compared to this little picture book. And in the Catheus series, when you're writing it um, and you're editing, you know, I like to edit my own work to begin with. And then I send it out to editors, you know, but I like yes. to edit it because uh, I'm so used to the book. I know the story, I know the depth the characters need, I know the twists and turns that I want mm -hmm. to have in it. So I do the major edit, the first major edit myself, but there is a point when you're reading your own work that it does become confusing, like in that you're just, um, you've read it so many times, you've looked at it so many times that it no longer makes sense, which is crazy because it's great. You know what I mean? It's there, the story is yeah. there. You just. And then you know at that stage you're done. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. You'll damage it. No. <laughs> so um, yeah. So I understand that as a writer, how that happened. Mm. You know. Um, well done um, yeah. on creating this masterpiece in Estonian. It's there for for young parents with children who are a little bit anxious about or don't understand the whole pandemic. It's there for teachers. It's there for grandparents and ultimately all it's all there for little ones, you know, um, and um, fantastic achievement that the Estonian children now have the opportunity or Estonian children all over the world yes. have the opportunity um, to read this or be read to and to, to have a little bit of comfort in, in this pandemic, you know, to so the stress and the anxiety yes. is taken away from them. And that they can understand a little bit better in their own way, in a child-friendly way, what it's all about. Um, well exactly, done, yeah. well done, uh, well done, Estonian translator Annette Rumberg. Um, thank you for yeah. taking the time um, to talk to us today. Um, I know you have a busy schedule. You're working. 
you're very busy with editing and translating at the moment. So I'm I'm delighted that you had the you were able to take the time to talk to us here. Thank you for having me here. That was lovely. I love chatting, you know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.